Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be continuing our discussion of binary pulsars, about which we talked about in one of the previous videos. But today we're actually going to use Universe Sandbox and try to discover what actually eventually happens to binary pulsar systems, specifically this one right here, known as Taylor and Hulse. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So in the previous video, I showed you two examples of binary neutron stars or binary pulsars uh, that exist in our galaxy that we found and discovered and were actually pretty impressed to discover because these stars are relatively rare, but they still exist out there and obviously we can see them because they're pulsars. Now, the only difference between um, the binary system I showed in the previous video and this one here is that Taylor and Hulse are only hypothetically binary pulsars. We know one of them is a pulsar, and this is how we discovered them. This is at a distance of about 26,000 light years away from us. But the second one, uh, we know it's a neutron star, but it only might be a pulsar. And the reason why it might be a pulsar is because we don't actually see its emissions. Its emissions are probably pointing in a different direction for us. And so what we actually see is we only see one of them pulsating, but the other one is only seen from the interaction with the first pulsar. And what I mean by this is that every once in a while, the uh, pulsations arrive to Earth at different times. Normally, a pulsar has very repetitive pulsations, but in this case, because these two are actually orbiting around one another, the pulsations actually arrive about three seconds later or three, three seconds earlier once in a while. And that's because the, they have an orbit around each other of the uh, semi-major semi axis of about three light seconds long. In other words, when the pulsar is the farthest away from Earth, it takes three seconds longer to arrive um, to our planet than when it's the closest. So because they're orbiting around each other, and you can kind of see this if I enable orbits, uh, because they're orbiting around each other, um, at some points in their orbit, they obviously arrive a little bit uh, quicker. And at other points, they arrive a little bit slower. Now, so what else do we know about the system? Well, first of all, the two people who discovered these two pulsars, they, they won a Nobel, Nobel Prize for this because this was the first system that was discovered where two very dense, very, or not very, but relatively massive stars orbited around each other so close that we could actually st study gravitational waves with them. And this was the first opportunity for us to study Einstein's theory of general relativity and try to discover if he was right. And uh, we still haven't really finished studying this, but right now we are almost certain he was right, but we still are studying these in quite a lot of detail. But basically the reason why is that, as I mentioned in the previous video, every time these two guys orbit around each other, they create what's known as a gravitational wave. It's basically like a ripple in space-time that is kind of difficult to imagine and difficult to understand. But what it does is it basically contracts or ex expands time-space just a little bit for it to affect each of the stars. And because of this effect, these two guys actually move closer and closer to each other. So the rate of movement uh, toward each other is about 3.5 meters per year or about 10 feet per year. So it's not a lot. But because they're not that far off from each other to begin with, so each of these is actually somewhat close to each other. The distance here is only about 1.1 radii of our own sun uh, at its closest. So basically this distance that you're going to see in a second, this distance right here is only really about the size of our sun. So let's see if the game has it represented correctly. We're going to place our sun here, see if it actually works. Yeah, no, it doesn't, because these are a lot closer than it should be, actually. In real life, they're a lot farther. In this case, they actually are literally uh, only about 15,000 kilometers away from each other. So this simulation in the game is not super accurate. But this would be uh, uh, half the sun. So this right here would be half the sun. Our whole sun would be this big. And so... This distance is not very far, and within the next 300 million years, they will actually 
uh, collide with each other. And this is where it gets interesting, because we're not really sure what's going to happen. We know when black holes collide, they just create a bigger black hole. When white dwarfs collide, they usually create a type 1a supernova. But when two neutron stars or two pulsars collide, this is when things are a little bit more mysterious for us. Now, each of these has mass more than the mass of Sun, so here it's 1.8 masses of the Sun. Or it's actually, this is not, I believe this is not particularly realistic either. Because the um, companion here is about 1.4 masses of Sun, so let's actually change that. This should be 1.4, and the original star, um, or the bigger star, has the mass of about... 1.4 as well, so they're actually relatively similar to each other in mass, forming a system that's about 2.8 masses of the sun. And they're definitely not as close to each other, so maybe we'll change the separation as well. And we can just change this into light seconds, so here we go, three light seconds away from each other. Uh, eccentricity should be a little bit lower. And let's just use our sun for comparison. So the distance should be about one radii of the sun, and this is about right. So there we go. This is a slightly more realistic representation of the system, uh, with both both of these kind of farther away from each other and essentially orbiting around one another uh, in this fashion. So here we go. Perfect. Now, and here's that pulsating light that we see, and this is the one that we don't see. So we want to get some of the effects from this one. So one important thing uh, that I haven't mentioned about this system just yet, and this is actually something that is really, really mind-blowing, is that the actual system here also creates a lot of energy from these gravitational waves. So this is something that we don't really observe anywhere else in the universe except for binary black holes or um, essentially binary pulsars. So the gravitational energy created by these gravitational waves here is uh, approximately 7.3 times 10 to the power of 24 watts. Now, in comparison, this is about 2% of total energy radiated by our, our own sun from the sunlight. So the actual gravitational power here is equivalent to about 2% of uh, solar energy, which is actually quite impressive. In comparison, our sun radiates gravitational energy as well, but the gravitational energy from our sun is only about 5,000 watts, which is literally like trillions and trillions of times less than the gravitational energy here. And so here we go. So there is that pulsating that we see, and that's the one that we don't see. This is actually quite perfect. The only thing I want to remove here is the labels. This is actually kind of what we observe, and this is at a distance of 26,000 light years away. Now we're going to actually collide these two together because I really want to see what's going to happen to two neutron stars in Universe Sandbox when you collide them. But this is really the mystery to us. So we don't know what's going to happen when in 300 million years when these two collide. It might create a very large supernova or maybe they'll create a bigger neutron star or maybe just maybe they'll create a black hole. So there's really kind of, um, there's really no actual examples out there because we haven't um, seen enough of these to for us to actually um, know what's going to happen to these two. But we're going to find out what, what happens to these two when they collide in Universe Sandbox. And for all we know, they might actually create something very unusual. So I'm going to make them come really close to each other and they're going to basically practically touch each other, almost touch each other. So here's, we're at a distance of about 3,000 kilometers only, and the gravitational waves here would actually increase quite dramatically. The, the energy here would be now a lot more, uh, or a lot higher than the energy of our sun. And so what's interesting is that you could probably harness the energy from these. We, know, we already have these devices that harness energy from actual waves, they kind of look like this. And uh, why not come up with something that can actually harness gravitational wave energy? Because this is clearly going to create a lot more power. Okay, here we go. They're coming closer and closer to each other. I need to start slowing down time more. Now remember, in terms of size, these are super small. This is like literally size of a small, or I guess medium-sized city. So this one is 12.9 kilometers in radius. And this one here is, oh, it's actually the same. 
And so, yeah, they're, they're actually really small. And you can kind of see they're both spinning in a different sort of direction. So they create two very interesting, very unusual pul uh, pulsating lights. And this is what will probably occur in about 300 million years. So maybe we'll get to one day actually observe this if we're still around. But let's keep decreasing their semi-major axes and also decelerate time a little bit more. This is already in milliseconds per second. This is slowed down by about a thousand, uh, thousand times. And we are at this point observing them orbit each other really quickly. This will create some crazy unusual effects, including of course the pulses that will be unusually fast and unpre unpredictable in some way because these two will now influence each other qu quite dramatically. Okay, so here we go. Maybe this will be the time when they actually collide. No, not yet. But they are definitely passing very close to each other. And you can kind of see that um, every time they pass each other, they create quite a lot of energy that is visible even. They kind of become more bright. Um, but the thing here that you need to understand as well is that this will all happen in like a second. At this distance, they'll actually create so much gravitational wave energy that they will basically slow down each other to the point where they'll most likely completely stop even. So the more gravitational waves they create, the more energy they produce, the more likely they will collide with each other quicker. And so this, this whole process from here to them colliding will be less than a second long. Okay, here we go. Is this going to be the collision? No, so close though. Normally, this if this was two regular stars, they would actually um, most likely break each other apart already because of the tidal effects. But because these two are so, so dense, ridiculously dense, uh, they actually do not do that. And I just realized they are moving really fast in relation to each other. This is relativistic speeds already. Uh, relative total velocity, 130,000 kilometers per second. That's a third of the speed of light. And their actual speed goes between 20 to 60,000 kilometers per second. So things will get really, really interesting here because of the relativistic effects as well. And maybe here we go. Oh, look at that. Well, that's it? They just disappear? Okay, where did they go? They literally just disappeared. Wow, that's that's in insane. They It's like they self-destructed. I'm gonna try this again. I wanna see if this is just a bug or if, if this is actually what happens. So, if we were to take these two and put them super, super close to each other, are they actually going to also just disappear? So here they are almost touching. We're going to now decelerate time quite dramatically and uh let's uh let's see what happens so there is there is our super slow motion collision between two neutron stars okay well that's official so apparently if you take a neutron star or a pulsar and we're just gonna take the infamous crab pulsar here and then you decide to collide it with another pulsar in this case, it's going to be PSR J13113430. They just kind of disappear. And maybe, just maybe, this is actually what's going to happen as well, but probably very unlikely. There's a very high chance there they will very, very likely create um, a black hole. Or possibly that. They might actually end up creating supernova, which I actually didn't realize was being created. So let, let me just actually go back to the, the simulation again, because maybe we missed a supernova. Maybe it actually happened, but we just didn't see it because we're really kind of close to the whole event here. So maybe the supernova did occur and these two destroy, destroyed each other and simply created the supernova. So we're going to do this again, decelerate time and move really far away and observe it from a distance. Okay, so there is that disappearance. And now, if we accelerate time, are, are they going to create a supernova? Yes, there we go. Two supernova even. Ah, okay. So that makes more sense. So their energy was released after their collision with each other as these two really powerful supernova. 
very interesting. So that's uh, that that makes more sense. So chances are when two neutron stars or two pole stars collide, you basically end up with a supernova. Awesome. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it. And now you know about the binary pulsars even more, and the hypothetical collision between them as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.